We're going to talk a little bit about Ackermann's formula here. In Ackermann's formula, um, we start with the controllability matrix. And again, we're assuming the system is controllable, so we can use Ackermann's formula. So the controllability matrix for a single input system is square and non-singular. Okay. The characteristic polynomial of our system is given by this expression. So the A values are the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. If we use the inverse of the controllability matrix as a transformation matrix, and we form A bar here, we basically can show that we get this companion matrix for our new A matrix. And here's our, our B, B bar. So we have a companion matrix, and so and the, char the characteristic polynomial coefficients appear in this column. So this is the controllability canonical form that we had talked about before. For the controllable canonical form, here's our controllable canonical form. And again, if our system is controllable, then the controllable canonical form is similar to the controllability canonical form. And so we can actually do this way. If I if I take so. The controllable canonical form, I use the tilde matrices, A tilde and B tilde. And so if I form the controllability matrix from that, again, that's going to be non-singular. And if I, so if I use this as a similarity transformation, I will also get A bar the same as when I had the original system and I used its controllability matrix as a transformation matrix. So these two transformations are equal to each other. And as a result, I can set this equal to this. I can solve for A tilde from this, and I get this expression. Okay. So this expression, if I take this quantity, I can call that my transformation matrix. This transformation matrix is multiplied on this side, and then the inverse on this side. And so this transformation matrix puts the system the, in the original coordinates into controllable canonical form. So. We now have a transformation. This is the transformation. As you, and as you can see, it clearly depends on the system being controllable. If the system is not controllable, then this will, this will not serve as a uh, transformation matrix. All right, so now we're going to apply state feedback for this controllable canonical form. So here's my state feedback gain. I have the various values of the state feedback gain, k0 through kn minus 1. And when I apply a tilde plus b tilde k tilde, when I multiply that all together, uh, notice that my b in the controllable canonical form is all zeros and a 1. And so this product is going to have all zeros up above, and then it's going to have stuff in the, in the bottom row. And that stuff in the bottom row basically are these coefficients appearing in each of the columns of the bottom row. And and so this is my a tilde, b tilde, k tilde, which is a companion matrix. Okay, so I still end, so a started off being a companion matrix. When I add this, I still get a companion matrix. Right? And so now this actually shows me how to pick uh, k tilde because I want my system to have this companion form. So that means I need to have these, these values be. Uh, so if my desired characteristic polynomial has these alpha coefficients, then the alpha coefficients need to go down here, and those need to be equal to the, the coefficients of the actual a tilde, b tilde, k tilde. And so that tells me I need to pick the k tilde values to be this, a i plus alpha i. Right? So, so that's what I need to pick for k tilde, the, the coefficients. So this tells me how now to pick the state feedback gain in the in the tilde coordinates. So this gives me the k tilde in the tilde coordinates. To get in the original coordinates, I need to multi mul multiply through by the transformation matrix. And so this is basically how Ackermann's formula is developed. And so this kind of works through it. Um, not, e not exactly, but you can see, you can get the, the basic gist of the Ackermann's formula. All right, so what we're talking about is eigenvalue placement, and Ackermann's formula is a tool for that. So Ackermann's formula by itself provides proof of the existence of a state feedback gain that arbitrarily places the eigenvalue of the system. So that's one thing that it does. However, Ackermann's formula in general is not numerically robust. That is, 
a small change, for example, in A or B matrices could, could result in a large change in the, um, in the state feedback gain that's used. And, um, and, and the reason that, that that can happen is because of the fact that we are having to compute an inverse, a matrix inverse, in the process of computing the state feedback gain. And it turns out that the inverse, you have to worry about things like condition numbers and things like that. We we've looked at some of that already uh, when we looked at the matrix perturbations, um, that those kinds of things can come to pass. So, um, so in, anyway, Ackerman's formula isn't numerically robust. Now, MATLAB actually has the command Acker that implements the Ackerman's formula. And it also uses a command place. So in MATLAB, you could use either. They have slightly different roles. So in, in um, MATLAB, um, MATLAB for both Acker and place wants to place the eigenvalues of the quantity A minus BK, not A plus BK. So if you want the K that places the eigenvalues of A plus BK, you have to use the negative of whatever Acker and place returns. Also, uh, place, while it is more numerically robust, cannot be used to place repeated eigenvalues. So that is a limitation of the place command. However, the place command can be used for multi-input systems, whereas the Ackermann's formula requires a single input system. So different, different strokes for different folks, different things going on here. Um, so in general, I encourage you to use place wherever it's possible, as opposed to Acker. But if you need to have repeated eigenvalues, then you'll, you, you'll have to use the Acker command. So this is eigenvalue placement using Ackerman's formula.